All right, so for division, um, we are basically doing long division here. Um, the biggest thing is that we do want to set one of the numbers into a whole number, but the other number we're going to keep as a decimal, but there is a little something we got to do there too, okay? So when I look at this, technically, I have the 3.276 divided by 0 0.14. The number that we're going to divide by, meaning the number that's going to be outside of our division sign of long division, that's the number that we're going to want to make into a whole number. So that way it's a little bit easier for us to see like, hey, for example, letter A, what do I have to multiply to 14 to get closest to the numbers inside of the decimal, okay? So here are the steps. Step number one, you're going to move the decimal on the outside of the division sign until it is a whole number. Step number two is you're going to move the decimal point on the inside of the decimal sign, the same number as what you did in step number one. And you're going to divide as usual and then move the decimal point from the inside of the decimal sign up uh, from the answer. So looking at letter A, I have 3.276, I'm going to write this on the side, divided by 0 0.14. Okay. Now in order for me to make this into a whole number, I am going to move the decimal twice to the right. Because I move that twice, I also have to make sure I move the other decimal twice. So what I'm really dividing here is 14 divided by the 327.6. Okay. Now, I, I know in the um, steps that we have on the right side, it does say move the decimal point from the inside uh, side out from the answer. I do like to just do that to begin with, so then that way we don't bring in our decimal. So I'm going to go ahead and just move that up to the first, okay? All right, now, please remember with long division, we're going to look at every number by itself first. So first, I look at three. That's the first number I want to see. Hey, do can I multiply anything to 14 to get to three? The answer there is going to be no, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one. I add a number every time I can't do it. So now I look at um, 32 together, okay? Is there anything I can multiply and, uh, sorry, I forgot to put the zero there, okay? Is there anything I can multiply to 14 to get closest to the 32, okay? Um, the closest thing I can get it to is multiplying it by 2. If I multiply 14 by 2... I would get a 28. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the 28 down. And now I subtract. 32 minus 28 gives me a 4. Now I'm ready to move on to my next number. So I bring the next number down. So now I go ahead and figure out, hey, what can I multiply to 14 to get closest to 47 or to that 47? Closest thing I can multiply it to is a 3, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply it by a 3. 14 times the 3 does give me 42, and now I subtract. So 47 minus 42 gives me 5. And lastly, I am going to go ahead and bring down the last number, which is 6, and now I have 56. I asked myself again, hey, what can I multiply to that 14 to get closest to the 56 or to that 56? Now, 56 is actually a multiple of that 14, so the factor I'm going to multiply to 14 is going to be 4. 14 times 4 does give me the 56, which then we end up with 0. So we are done with our long division here. So 14, when I divide the 3.276 divided by 0 0.14, I get 23.4. Okay, looking at our next number over here. So I have, once again, the 6, or 0.646 divided by 0.17. I want to make sure that the number that I'm dividing by becomes into a whole number. So I'm going to move my decimal point 1, 2, so now I have 17, but because I moved that one too, I also have to move the other one by two. So I have 64.6. .6. So setting up my long division, I have 17 divided by, or sorry, we're dividing by 17 to the 64.6. I'm going to go ahead and just bring up that decimal point 
so we don't forget that. And we start looking at each number individually and adding one by one. Six. Six is not going to be a multiple of 17. Um, six is too little of a number to do that. So we're going to go ahead and move with one more number. Okay. Is there anything that I can multiply 17 by to get closest to that 64? Okay. So if I start looking at my multiples, I can multiply and... 17 times 2 is not going to be enough. 17 times 3 is going to be what is closest I can get to the 64. So, when I multiply 17 times 3, whoops, okay, 17 times 3 does give me 51. So, I'm going to go ahead and put 51 right underneath it. 64 minus 51 now is going to be 13. Now I bring down the 6 because I still need to bring, every time I subtract, I need to bring one number to the right of it down. So now I look at 136 and I'm going to check, hey, what can I multiply to 17 to get to the 136? Okay. So 17 times 8 gives me that 136. I subtract 136 here and that gives me zero so we are done so my answer here is 3.8 okay looking at one more here so I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to move my decimal once again I always want to move the decimal that I am going to uh, divide by and make into a whole number so here I am dividing by 1.3 so I'm going to move my decimal to the right one. And because I move that to the right one, I need to make sure I move the other one to the right one as well. So in reality, I am dividing by the 13 to 70.2. And we do the exact same thing. So I look at the first number, which is the 7. 7 is too small of a multiple in order to multiply anything to 13. Thir or 7 is not a multiple of 13. So I add one more which is 70, okay? I'm gonna think, hey, what can I multiply to the 13 to get closest to that 70, okay? When I think about it, I can go 13 times one, 13 times two, 13 times three, okay? The closest I can get to 70 here is gonna be 13 times five, and that is 65. Now that I have that multiple, I'm gonna subtract it to the original number, which is 70 minus 65. And that is 5. I'm ready to bring down the next number, which is 2. So I am going to see, hey, what can I multiply to the 13 to get closest to the 52 or to that 52? Now, 52 is a multiple of 13. So I can actually multiply by 4 to get to the 52. So I go ahead and subtract. 52 minus 52 is 0. That cancels out. So I now get 5.4 for my answer, okay? I want you to go ahead and pause this video and go ahead and try letter D on your own. Okay, so if you unpause this video now, that means that you have officially divided and your final answer for letter D should be 63.7. If you did not get 63.7, well, let's go ahead and go over that. So once again, I need to move that decimal point twice to the right because I need to make the number I'm dividing by, which is that 0 0.15, into a whole number, which is 15. Now the number I am dividing, I have to move that as well. However many times I move, I move to make a whole number, I have to move to the other number. So I move twice, I'm going to move one, two. So I get 955.5. I move up my decimal, and now we start looking at these individually, okay? So first number I have inside the division sign is a 9. 9 is not a um, big enough number for me to see if it's a multiple of 15, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the, uh, the next number and add one. So together I will have 95. I'm going to think to myself, what number or what multiple can I multiply to our to 15 to get to the 95, okay? 
So when I think about 95, um, the closest number I can multiply here is 6, because 15 times 6 gives you a 90. Okay, so then I subtract 95 minus 90, that does give me 5, and I'm ready to bring down my next number, which is the 5. So I now have 55. I'm going to think through the multiples of 15. What can I multiply to 15 to get close to 55 or to that 55? Now, if I multiply, the closest thing I can get, the closest multiple is going to be 3. I'm going to multiply 15 times 3, and that gives me the multiple of 45. So I have 45. 55 minus 45 is going to give me 10. And I bring down the next number over. So now I have 105. I'm going to think, is 105 a multiple of 15? And it is. So I go ahead and multiply 15 to the 7, because 15 times 7 does give me 105. When I subtract these two numbers, it does give me a 0. So therefore, my final answer is 63.7.